All right, thank you all for coming to the 31st Ward Runoff Candidate for Special thanks to the Northwest Community Church, Belmont Craven United Community Organization, the two candidates, Ray Suarez and Willie Santiago, our timekeeper, Sean Starr, and everyone to help put this together. My name is Alonso Zaragoza, and I will be your moderator for tonight. We are going to get started right away to make sure that we get through as many questions as possible. But first, we will have a few brief words from Pastor David Fote. Hey, welcome to our house. It's good to have you here. If you should need the ladies' room or the men's room, just step through the entry right here and to your right, uh, the ladies' room, and then the next door is the men's room. If I were to come to your house, I would be nice. So you're in my house. <laughs> we're going to be nice. Okay? Love being a part of Bell Craigian community. We're here to serve. If we can ever help in any way, our members on the sign, give us a call, and we're just here to serve anyone and everyone, okay? But I just did want to ask you, you know, I know it's a candidate's forum, but we are in a church, so it must be nice and respectful, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Millie Santapa and Ray Suarez, we only have one hour to get through as many questions as possible, so please do not go over your allotted time. In front of you is a timekeeper. Sean, he will hold up a yellow card when you have 30 seconds left and a red card when you have 15 seconds left. Again, please respect the audience's time and do not go over the allotted time for the question. Each of you will now have three minutes to introduce yourself to the audience and then when we start with the questions, we'll start with uh, Millie Santago first. Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for being here. I first of all want to thank the uh, Northwest Community Church and the Belmont Craigian Association and Alonso Sargosa for putting this together. My name is Vene Santiago, and you know that we are in a rock. April 7th is the day, and I am proud to have been endorsed by the Chicago Tribune and the Chicago Sun-Times, because the endorsement let, let, lets me know that I am a strong candidate, that I am a candidate with vision, a candidate will bring, that will bring changes to the 31st Ward. And I think it's also about bringing transparency, respect, honesty, integrity to the 31st Ward. My candidacy, according to the Chicago Tribune and the Chicago Sun Times, represents that I am a candidate strong enough to continue bringing down the machine of Joe Berrios and Ray Suarez. So I am here to win. And I'm here to continue bringing my positive message of change to the residents of the community. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for uh, putting this together. Alonzo, Northwest uh, Community Church, Pastor Petit, and all the people that are here. Thank you for coming by. Uh, I am most proud of being able to use my experience with the city of Chicago to make the city of Chicago work for the residents of the 31st Ward. Through creating hundreds of units of housing, creating thousands of jobs, protecting and improving our schools, activity, engaging residents and the police to reduce crime by 27% from 2013 to 14, we have been able to create a thriving community to live and work. The last four years, our economic has been down and it has it hit our, our community hard. However, we did not stop from going out and getting companies to come down to the 31st floor and, and lay their roots. The three years alone, I had created over 2,200 jobs in the war. The majority of the jobs came from two projects, the development of the Marshall Field Building into a high-tech data center, uh, a factory, a community, uh, uh, a industrial warehouse, and Walmart who came into our community. Each one of these companies, the Marshall Field Building brought over 1,900 jobs, and the Walmart brought 350 jobs. We were able to convince these companies to invest millions of dollars in our community without providing a single TIF subsidy to come into our community. We were able to get these companies to hire qualified people from the community first. But we ensured that these good jobs and paying living wage I support the passing increase of the minimum wage of Chicago for $13 an hour. I was a co-sponsor. Now more money is being created and in going to our communities to support small businesses. One of my most important jobs is to make sure our children have the right 
learning environment so they can develop skills needed to do the job in the market. I'm proud to have secured over $140 million of education dollars to invest in our community. We have, stated, we have a state-of-the-art new high school that I, created, I helped build, North Grand, and have modernized Kelvin Park by bringing $9 million to, to bit of retrofit Kelvin Park to become a seventh and eighth grade uh, receiving center plus 9, 10, 11, and 12. Housing uh, is, a, is a real uh, opportunity and I have used this experience in making the 31st Ward the right housing development to serve our needs. I have made sure that seniors have affordable quality housing and I'm building my fourth senior housing home in the ward. It is at George and Cicero. As a Vietnam veteran, I understand how important it is to make and pay back those who serve our country. I am working to develop a new concept of a senior housing project that will that'll have 62 units for veterans and 62 units Thank for regular you. residents. Thank you. First question. Both candidates want safe streets and want to hire more police. Well, what specific steps are you going to take as aldermen to improve safety in our community? Two minutes each. We'll start with Millie. The crime and public safety is a big issue here. And it's a big issue in the community, in the entire city. I have been talking to thousands of families and residents for the last eight or nine months. And all I hear is people feeling unsafe, even in their own homes. We need more police protection and, and to hire more police, but yet, if we hire more police officers and yet they are not going to be put in specific areas and the hotspot areas where crime happens more frequently than in other areas, then it would, it would be waste. My commitment to co continue to combat crime is to engage the uh, residents and the parents into some, something more proactive. Parents that will be involved in the, uh, in the uh, education with the kids. Residents who get to know each other and be the eyes and ears of the community. I want to be able to create a sense of responsibility, a sense of, of, uh, of people getting the hands of, of in, in getting the hands on where the problems are. We have to improve the communication and the relationship between the police officers and the community. Sometimes it's very, very sad that residents say they do not trust the police because the police is not to protect and serve, but to sometimes be uh, kind of uh, blunt or unfair with the, with the kids. We need to uh, try to improve the relationship between the police and the residents because they, they have to work together. I want to be able to be out there if I'm elected to the hot spots where the crimes are happening, talking to people and making sure that they know I'm out there and if I cannot solve the problem immediately, I'm going to try to build different coalitions with organizations in the area with the rest of the aldermen that are surrounding this area because it will be a good thing to do. Thank you. Save our applause today, and you're, you're, you're taking up time that we need for the questions. Uh, yes, crime is down in a 27, by 27% in my community. I spent countless hours bridging the community with the police department. I am going to build black clubs. I'm going to recruit black cop captains that will be the intermediates between the community, my office, and the police. We're going to work hand in hand and we're going to make sure that we fight crime the way it should be fit for by engaging and making the residents be part yeah. of the solution, working with us, being our eyes and ears also. But I want to let you guys know one thing in the 31st Ward. Everybody was telling me that caps means every two months, that it is unacceptable, and I agree. And I just finished an agreement with the police superintendent and, El Whip and the first deputy superintendent in the 31st Ward, we are going to start having CAP meetings once a month again on a trial basis for six months to see how many people come out and participate and become part of the solution so that we can get rid of this problem. So that we won't have any more excuses that we don't meet enough. It'll start in April or later, or later than May. So I want you guys to know and take that message back. The CAPs in the 31st Ward will meet once a month from now on. But that's because we work hard 
in making sure that they know what are the problems and what are going to be some of the solutions as we listen to people and we motivate people to say, hey, listen, I see this and I will bring it to your attention and your office will bring it down to where it's supposed to be. I want to be, remain anonymous and we respect that. You want to remain anonymous, we we'll respect you on it, but our office will be the intermediate that will bring the information down to the police department. Thank you. Everyone in this room wants great schools in the ward. What specific actions are you going to take as aldermen to make sure that all of the schools in the ward, public, charter, and faith-based, improve during your next, your four years in office? Two minutes each. Uh, we'll start with Ray. Well, I have brought over $140 million, first of all, to the schools in my community. And that money is being, was invested in modernizing and making our schools better. And we were, going to, we're going to work with the Board of Education because people think that the alderman has the sole authority to fire a principal and to fire a teacher and to bring somebody else you know, to take the job. That's not the way it is. These people have contracts and, they have, and you have to respect those contracts whether you like the teacher or you don't like the teacher. But we're going to work together to make people more responsible and if that principal doesn't do the job she's supposed to do, then we gotta get rid of her because that's where we start. That's, she's the part of the team. And I'm gonna make sure that charter schools are held to the same accountability as the public schools. I don't have any charter schools in the 31st Ward. Unfortunately, we don't. And when the Board of Education closed 50 schools, we didn't close a school in the 31st Ward. And when I'm being accused of voting for the closing of 50 schools, it shows that they don't know what they're talking about because the power to close schools doesn't fall on the alderman. The power the state of Illinois gave the authority and the power to the school board. Those are the ones that vote to close a school or open up a school. And it's very important that we understand this. But I want to make sure that schools are held accountable for what they're teaching. And if they don't teach our kids properly, then we should start taking the steps to get rid of that team and bring in a new team that will do the job and do the job for our community and to make sure that the future of tomorrow is our children are educated properly. Well, man. He says that he has brought $140 million to the schools. First of all, I want to know if he has some documentation to prove that because we all know that the great majority of the funding for schools come from the state. As far as I'm concerned, the aldermen don't have any power whatsoever to set aside additional funding for the schools. And most of those monies are automatically assigned to the schools for, for infrastructure, for, for uh, the, the buildings, and for the maintenance of the schools. He likes to take credit for things that sometimes he hasn't done. And uh, you know what? When he said the $140 million have been invested in the, in, in the 31st Ward, I question, where is the priority when it comes to the kids and it comes to the education? One school in our ward is that the, a level one. Only one school. The rest of the schools are not performing at, at a higher standard. Kelvin Park High School has been in the probation list for 19 years. 19 years. He said that he brought nine nine million dollars uh, for some projects. But what about the priority, which is the kids, the children? We are not improving the quality of education. We are not focusing on the future of our children. We have to some to do something about. When he takes credits on things that he hasn't really get hands on completely, you know, I question because. Two weeks ago, as a matter of fact, he called the press conference to Kelvin Park to announce the seal of my literacy, something that he had, he had nothing to do with. And in fact, he knows that the project was created, it was as an, an initiative by Dr. Julio Cruz, and that, that was a bill signed by Pat Quinn in August of 2013. He did not even invite Dr. Cruz to the press conference, so, you know, I just wanted to, to let you know that, that I know what that is. Um, the 31st Ward needs a 24-7 alderman. 
Will you have any outside jobs aside from aldermen? Where will your aldermanic service office be at? What will be the operating hours of the office? How many ward nights will you have? Will your employees all be residents of the 31st ward? How will you choose the employees? Two minutes each. I'll start with Millie. I will be a full-time alderman. There's no question about it. This is a job that is not only full-time, it's 24-7. Because in order for you to be effective, and in order for you to be the leader of the community, you have to be out there at night, on Saturdays and Sundays, engaging people into new projects. I want to make sure that my staff is represented according to the diversity of the ward. We have Latinos, we have African American, we have Anglos, we have Polish, we have other Eastern Europeans, we have a lot of Filipinos. So I want to make sure that my office and my staff represents what the, the award is all about. I want to be that person who will address the issues and in a fair level, that if something is coming to the ward, we have a special grant or something that could be distributed to community organizations, I want to make sure that each of those organizations, each of those groups, are well represented and get the fair share. One of the things that I really also want to stress is on the fact that I want my office to be an open door to everybody, that anybody who has a problem can come to my office at any time and that person will be treated with respect. If I don't have the solution to the problem, I want to make sure that I build those coalitions with community organizations, with churches, with other leaders, other uh, uh, political leaders in all levels possible, city, county, state, and federal, to make sure that I, if I cannot do it because it doesn't fall under my jurisdiction, I, I want to make sure that we have a, a good coalition, good relationship with everybody so that I can make sure I bring the solution to that person. But I am not going to let anybody hang in when it comes to solution. And I would not be one who said, oh, that's not my problem, call 911. I want to be there for everybody no matter what. Thank you. I'm a 724 Oliver. I don't have any other job. I've done this and I will continue to do it. That's my job. That's the job I chose to do, and the privilege of the people in the 31st Ward gave me to serve them. Uh, my office staff is mixed. My office staff, we speak three languages. We speak Spanish, we speak English, and we speak Polish. And if we have to speak another language, we have to go out and, get, and, and take some classes, but we're going to try. Uh, my office is open five days a week. War night is on Monday, and we've been doing a good job in war night. And we, we don't, anybody, our office welcomes anybody. And we've done this, and it's an experience. I don't care who you are, what language you speak, what your status, whether you can vote or not vote, you're welcome to come into our office, and you'll be properly and respectfully treated, and we will try to solve the problem that you have. And we do a lot of problem solving day in and day out, because people deserve, deserve the right to come to our office or to any political office and ask for help. And as far as uh, working with different organizations, we work with everybody. We work with any organization that we have partnered up with. We just went today to the Northwest Housing Center, which is a brand new, great organization that's gonna open up in the Northwest side here in Chicago. And they have a great group of young people that are dynamic, they're full of energy, and they wanna work. And that's what this office is about. It's about working and solving people's problems. We're going to continue to do that because there's no reason why we can't do that for anyone. And sometimes I, we get complaints from people that tell me, I called this office and they told me to go downtown or to call 911. We don't do that in our office. We give service because we're, that's the way that people expect to receive when they come to our office. Thank you. Yo. We have a serious problem with illegal parking in the alleys, illegal conversion of single family homes, and loud music playing at all hours of the night. As Alderman, what specific actions are you going to take to address those three issues? Two minutes each, we'll start with Ray. Well, we do have a problem with illegal parking in the alley, and if there's people parking illegally in the alley, and we know about it, we will send the police to the alley and have that car ticketed, and if, if it's, if it's got to be towed, it'll be towed. And if we have a problem with loud music, I wrote the ordinance on loud music in Chicago. And when the police are called, they enforce it. I know they do. 
But the problem is a lot of people don't call. Some people call, I know that, but most people will put up with that inconvenience. Call the police department, and if you don't get a response the day you call, then the next morning you call my office, you talk, you talk to whoever you're going to talk to and say, I call, I call at 10 o'clock, and there was no response, I call at 10.30, and then we'll find out what happened. And if you call enough, the police department will have to show up. Now, as far as illegal apartments, I'm against illegal apartments than anybody else. But I am not going to walk around the streets as an alderman and go in your house and point out that you have an illegal apartment. But if a neighbor of yours calls my office and turns in the complaint, because I don't want people to be afraid or invite me to their house to talk to them because they have an illegal apartment, we will do what it takes because we'll, go we'll take it to the building department, we'll go to court, and we'll follow it through until the problem is corrected. And we have done a lot of illegal apartment correction because it is our duty to do it. But we want people to call us and complain about it. I don't want anybody saying, well, I don't want Suarez coming around on my block because they're going to find an illegal apartment here. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I was elected for. I was elected to solve problems, not to create problems for people. That has been one of the issues that uh, many of the residents uh, have expressed to me. The fact that not only they park on, on the alleys illegally, but they also do a lot of other illicit activities like, you know, having sex in the car, dealing drugs in the car, smoking pot in the cars, behind anybody's property. I have talked to people who have been kicking out people that are in the car behind their, their garage. And they have said that sometimes they call police and it takes forever. So one of the things that I really want to do is, again, try to engage the community, the residents, into something more proactive. If you see something, you call. If, if nothing happens, you start doing a change, to a change uh, with, uh, with the rest of the residents by you so that everybody calls. I think it, it's, it's, it, it says a lot about, about the, uh, the safety in some of the areas. Some of the alleys are also very, very dark. Especially, I, I had my light behind my, my house um, out for about four days, and it was really scary. And sometimes when that happens, the city takes a long time. The Ultima's office takes a long time before something is, is corrected or done. And on the uh, issue of apartments, there's a lot of units, units in, in our world that are facing that problem. A lot of units that are not legally uh, uh, fractured, and uh, people need to uh, people need to speak up and denounce it, and go to whatever to the office or call the city or call the buildings department because that cannot be accepted. I think uh, we all pay the property taxes, and people need to be respected and follow the law according to the city ordinance. Thank you. If for some reason you are unable to finish your four-year term as alderman, who would you recommend to the mayor to replace you? We'll start with merely one minute. Who do I recommend if I don't finish the term? Assuming you win. Something happens. You can no longer continue the four-year term. Who would you recommend to the mayor because that's on the process work? Um, in order to, to Well, I think it's, it's a little too premature. It's a little too soon because first I have I have to cross that bridge before I'm elected. Hopefully I'll be elected and I will uh, uh, finish the full term. But, you know, if something happens to me, and let's say it's something about health or I am indicted on some corruption or something, you know, at that time, who's going to think of, of the, who's going to replace me? I think it's a little too premature. I would have to, to be elected before I answer that question. Well, if, when I get elected, I will finish the four-year term, so I'm going to recommend Ray Suarez take my place. Boy, oh man. Yeah, the only reason we ask this question is because not, not too long ago an alderman died in office and it's good to know who's going to 
who would take that position. Uh, next question. We have a budget problem to fix. What are some of your solutions to fix the budget gaps that Chicago currently faces? And will you vote to raise property taxes? We'll start with Ray. Well, we do have a budget crisis, and I support, first of all, first of all, I will not vote, and I'm telling you right now, I will not vote for property tax increases at all. No matter what happens, I will not support a property tax increase. I'm tired of everybody going to the homeowners to solve all the crisis. We're going to look at TIF. TIF reform is very important. TIF dollars are being used, in my opinion, irresponsibly. So we have to figure out a way to use these, 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 this money uh, in a conscientious way. And before dealing with this issue, the 31st Ward, we were able to de we develop the Macy Building and the, and the Marshall Field Warehouse, and we didn't use TIF dollars. So if we can do it, other people can do it. And looking at, at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the tax revenue, I think that we have to look at the sales tax and see it's so antiquated. It's a system that does not fairly tax services in the city of Chicago that we can that we raise tax look we should raise tax on luxury items, not essential such as hiring an accountant on a on a or a public relations firm or other professional services. And I also believe that once we get the casino, the money that the casino brings should be totally devoted to to to, to, uh, to pay for the pension uh, obligation that we have in the city of Chicago. But we should not, and I repeat, we should not pay property taxes to solve these, these crises that were created uh, with irresponsible uh, uh, actions. We all know that the city of Chicago is in big trouble, and it's, uh, it's been like that for a long time. And what we see that every year after you know, every time they present the budget to us, it's cuts here and cuts there and money that's going to be allocated for, for education. We get uh, taxes on, on a lot of things with the excuse that it's going to go to fund public schools or to fund uh, some other priorities in our, in our daily lives. But then we run out of money, the schools don't get money, the situation continues to be the same. We need to look at a, at, a, at a bigger picture. I am totally against property tax. I don't think our homeowners should be continue to be punished year after year, especially those seniors that are on fixed income and don't have a, a, a salary increase every year. Seniors that have been a homeowners for about 30 or 40 years and yet they make maybe, I don't know, $50,000 a year and then when you continue to raise the property taxes, it is unfair. So I think we need to look into into other options, maybe luxury luxury expenses, uh, people who own boats, people who uh, who make more than two or three hundred thousand dollars a year. They should they should be paying a higher tax in order for for the uh, middle class or the working class families or low income families could continue to survive. <coughs> my my intention is not to vote for property taxes at all, if that seems to be the, the last resource, then it would be the last resource. But for now, I don't believe in raising property taxes. I think our families are burdened every year and something something is, is not right. We need to continue working towards the families to make sure that our families stay in our, in our, in our city, in our ward. Thank you. Rumor has it that a number of charter school proposals are going to be brought up for the Northwest side. Aside from being in favor of a charter school moratorium, will you actively resist and fight against all additional charter schools from coming into the 31st Ward? Also, have you taken any money from charter school lobbies or advocates? In one minute. Really? I have not taken any money from anybody representing charter schools. That is a fact. I want to make sure that our local schools are a priority. We don't have any charter schools in our ward, but 
The minute the char a charter school come in our world, that means that our schools are not good enough for our children. And we have to make sure that we provide more resources. We, we bring more money to the classroom. We, we assist the teachers in, 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 in providing them with the necessary resources and help that they need. We, we don't, I, I don't oppose charter schools because I think families have the right to choose. You know, sometimes competition is good, but we want to make sure that we have the best schools in our world, that our schools are, are, are the, the, the pride of the families, that more newcomers continue to come here and set roots and right. raise their families here. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Aside from being in favor of a charter school moratorium, will you actively resist and fight against all additional charter schools from coming into the 31st Ward? Have you taken any money from charter school lobbies or advocates? First of all, I've never taken any money from charter school advocates. I do not have any charter schools in the 31st Ward at the present time. People have tried to come. I said no for now. But I will tell you, I believe that my responsibility is to make sure that this public school system in our ward should be the best, the finest, and the most uh, effective system in our community. But I also believe that all the schools in our ward are overcrowded. There isn't one school in our community that's not overcrowded. And our kids get put on a bus every day, every day. And I feel that if a charter school came in and it was a good school and I presented the idea to my residents and they're in favor of it, then we would run a charter school because I don't want the bus five to six to 800 kids daily out of our community. We want to keep them in our community and learn in our community. What is your policy on accepting campaign donations from companies, lobbyists, or individuals with pending business before the city council or city council committees? One minute each, right? We have, we have rules in, in, in the city council, and I follow the rules uh, that are in place in the city council for campaign contributions. I would be totally against accept, accepting any money from organizations or companies or corporations who do business with the city. That's a conflict of interest, and I think my integrity would be at stake. So to make it clear, I want to make sure that I do not follow the steps of some other elected officials that have been in office for a long time, and they have made millions of dollars in, in political contributions in their war chest. In, uh, and uh, you know, some of these monies have come from, from organizations and corporations who are, made, who are doing business with the city or have some personal interest in a specific ward, especially when it comes to uh, bringing a new developer or, or a development or something like that. I want to make sure that when something comes to my ward, it's because the community needs it and it's because it has transparency above all. Thank you. We have a serious lack of opportunities for our young adults in the ward. There are few jobs available, no community centers for them to use in the ward, and the parks and schools offer very little programming for them and never in the evening. What specific plans do you have to make sure that young adults have something to do in the ward as a productive, productive alternative to being on the streets? Two minutes each, Millie starts. Unfortunately, our, our kids, our youth, don't have many options, many opportunities, especially during summertime or after school. Uh, we need to continue bringing more resources to the school or be more creative in, when it comes to keeping our kids safe and, and busy in something more productive. One of the things that I would love to do is to um, create some type of a program of retreats where we take the children and, 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 and teens to, to a retreat for a week, for a month during summertime uh, and, and to expose them to career opportunities, to dream and succeed, and expose them to, to a series of, 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 uh, of uh, opportunities to get to college and to learn something instead of just having them being out there on the streets. I think it would be a great help for the parents who sometimes don't have any option with the kids during summer because they work one or two jobs. We have to be more creative. We have to, to uh, try to talk to uh, all the uh, organizations that are in the area that don't, don't have the funding. I would be 
I will compromise myself to try to create a special fund from our own budget or even from my own salary if it's, if, if, if it's necessary to create some sort of, of, of a project and give them uh, scholarships uh, to go to college and engage them in some other uh, projects. Unfortunately, I've been talking to people and they have been very upset because nowadays the majority of, of the activities and projects with Chicago Park Districts they require a fee. And our families cannot pay for those fees to keep the kids there doing something, something productive. So I will, I will try to be more creative in bringing different activities on my own, on my own from my office to keep our kids safe. Okay. Uh, it is true that uh, the problem that we have in our community is that we have places, but they're not big enough to absorb the amount of children that we have in our community. The schools that after school have after school social services, the parks have it, but just they're just too crowded. Some faith-based organizations in our community are providing those services, and a lot of people don't want to use those. They should start using them. I thought I put in a proposal, which is a new TIF. It's coming on, on Bell, on Diversity, going from Cicero to Central, and by Lockwood, I put in a corridor to get to Craig and Park, and we're gonna build a brand new, brand new field house, which will be similar to the park that's on Fullerton and Washtenaw, and the, and, the, and the Craig and School Council will be designing it, and we're gonna have activities there all year round, because right now, what's there is a disgrace. It looks like a little garage, but we're gonna work hard to build this new park and to work which I believe is important, let's start taking advantage of the faith-based groups. Like this church has a after-school program that a lot of people don't use them. So why don't we start doing it also until, until we get enough areas. Uh, I, I brought in at Faulkner School a brand new AstroTurf field that's used all year round, all year round. And I put a brand new AstroTurf field at the North Bend High School, all year round. It's got a walking track, a soccer field, a baseball field, uh, uh, a basketball uh, area, and, 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 and tool, I mean, a playground for the kids. So we want to build more of those, and we're, we're also now doing is that we're taking all those old playgrounds and, and re-bringing them up to date by removing their old equipment and bringing in new equipment. So we should modernize and help some. What is your position on bringing in new restaurants into the ward and allowing them to have liquor licenses? How will you work with the community to ensure that those businesses are a good fit for our community? Two minutes, right? Well, I would have they come into the office to talk to me, and if they want a restaurant, most of the time we say yes, if they have, if they have liquor, now bring it to the community. We're gonna start bringing them to the community. We're gonna form a, a committee on, on, on businesses, and if the community, in the surrounding area is in favor of it, be no problem. But the community has to be in favor of it because I get the complaints, I get the headaches, I get, uh, and, and I feel sorry for some of these people because sometimes a business comes in and they start selling liquor, which is no problem as long as they do it professionally and quietly, but it becomes a, a, a nuisance in the community and then we have to act on it. I have no problem with any personal a business that wants to open up in a respectable, professional manner, and as long as my community wants it, it'll open up. That's the way it works in the 31st Ward. I am totally in favor of creating a stronger business ward. When he says that, uh, that he feels sorry for those who cannot open a business or something, I question that because I have talked to business people who have left the ward because they cannot afford to continue living in a ward in which the alderman continues to harass them and to, to make them, to force them to leave. We have so many businesses that have closed and, and I'm not making this up. These are st st statements from businesses that have left the ward. We have affidavits by business people who have who have been forced to leave the ward after the alderman continues to, to demand for contributions, sometimes in cash. 
you know, and uh, this is not a friendly, alder a, a business friendly alderman, this is not a, a, a business friendly ward. I want to make sure that every new business that, that want to come here to, to receive them with open arms. In, in, on the issue of liquor, you know, you go to, you go to every Every single ward, every anywhere in the city, and you have nice bars, nice restaurants with uh, with uh, the liquor license. Why not providing a, a, a ward where people can stay here, go to a nice bar, go to a nice restaurant, and, and invest in the community to, to to make sure that the money is kept here instead of them going elsewhere to have fun to go to a nice restaurant. We have a lot of young people, professionals here. I want to encourage them to open new places and new businesses. Why not? We have all the potential to be a better ward. Um, unfortunately, the business here in the 31st ward is stagnant and we have to change the trend. We need to make this ward more business friendly for the people. How are you going to ensure that an individual resident is treated just as fairly as a campaign donor is treated? One minute, Millie. How are you going to ensure that an individual resident is treated just as fairly as a campaign donor is treated? I am about fairness all across. I think uh, that's what has distinguished me from a lot of other leaders. I am about being fair, and when it comes to donations or to some other special treatments, you know, I want to make sure that my people are treated, that everything is, is distributed fairly, and that I, I don't get any sides because somebody uh, has given me money, and, and you know, I, 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 I'm not that type of person. I want to make sure that everything that I will do will be with transparency, with honesty, and fairness, and uh, not to uh, uh, be someone who would say something today and tomorrow then you punish the person. I am not that type of person. I'll be very fair. How are you going to ensure that an individual resident is treated just as fairly as a campaign donor is treated? Well, we treat everybody that comes to our office fair. And nobody, nobody's ever asked for a, for a donation like, like, like she's stating right now. People come into our office for a service, they get the service that they require, and they go home happy. This office is to, to take care of everyone. I, as I said before, you don't have to be a voter to come to my office. In other offices, sometimes they make it a little harder. In our office, we take care of everyone. I don't care who you are. Sometimes they don't even live in the ward and they come in and they get the service because they deserve the service and they're taxpayers. And we're gonna to continue to provide service on an equal basis for everyone that comes to my office because that's the, the, the right of every citizen to go in an automatic office, whether he lives there or not. He has the right to be treated and given a, at least the right answers of what is going on and what are his concerns. Thank you. Many ward residents want to get involved in the community and have a say in what our taxpayer money is spent on. Outside of a political, political organization, what will you do to ensure that all residents, both young and old, have a real say and are involved in the civic process? One minute each, right? Well, if they want to get involved, call, register, because we're going to start forming committees, and we're going to get you to work. So anybody that's interested, call the office, say, I want to get involved, I want to get involved in this committee, the housing committee, uh, public safety committee, whatever the committees we can afford, and you'll be called. Hopefully, you'll come and work with us. That's what's going to happen. That's one of the things that I would love to do, and, and involve the community, the youth, everybody into, into something. I mean, there's a lot of people that have so many talents, experiences in different areas. You know, we need that. We need more leadership. We need more people that are really engaged and that really want to be part of this movement, part of, of uh, uh, creating a better, a better, uh, ward a better community to live. 
this is something that um, sometimes we're lacking. We forget that there are a lot of people who really want to get involved, but they don't know how. My office is going to be is going to be an open door, so everybody who would have an idea, who would like to get involved, seniors, handicapped people, people with special needs, the youth, parents, immigrants, anywhere could could also have a part in some special project as they wish. There's a lot of people who have great ideas, and why not implement it? It's about bringing people together to to create a better world to live. Thank you. Currently, safe passage routes are planned out and drawn by CPS officials that don't live in the area. How are you going to ensure that principals, LSEs, and the community are more involved in the safe passage process to ensure that those workers are placed in the locations that best maximize safety? One minute each, Millie. We have to continue empowering local school council parents in anything that it's uh, involved, that, that has to do with the community. Anything that has to do with safety, anything that has to do with public input. I think parents sometimes don't have the chance to to, uh, to be more uh, participants in the, in, the, uh, in the ward or in the school or any other activities or issues that are in the community. I want to make sure that, you know, that, that, that there's some great information out there, that people are inclusive, that people have the right to know what's going on in, the, in, the, in their particular neighborhoods. And, and to have people involved, to have more unity and, and create the process of uh, participatory in, in every level, it's, it's a great thing to do. The, the war is about, not about the Alderman, it's not about the politicians, it's about the communities in general. Thank you. Currently, safe passage routes are planned out and drawn by CPS officials that don't live in our area. How are you going to ensure that principals, LSEs, and the community are more involved in the safe passage program to ensure that those workers are placed in the locations that best maximize safety? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call the, the CEO of the schools and make sure that I file a complaint and make sure that the principal and the LSC get involved in helping choose the people that are going to be in those safe passage and who is going to be hired and where they're going to go. And I, I can assure you that's going to happen because at, at, at times uh, the LSC uh, school board picks the locations and says, so here, here you go. I think it's a great idea and I'm going to work on that, and I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make sure that it happens, that people are, are placed in an effective way where they want to work close to a school and become more efficient and more reliable because there'll be less travel time for them possible. There's a huge homeless population, both veteran and non-veterans in the ward. As Alderman, what are you going to do to provide resources for those residents that are most in need of our assistance? One minute each, great. Um, I, as I said before, I'm in the process of building another uh, two senior homes. One, each one of them are going to be 30, 66 units. One will be for seniors, and one will be for, re, for veteran seniors who serve in the military, and they'll be able to live there comfortably. The other, uh, we're having a, uh, the Department of Human Services has got a program and we're working with them to go out and start offering the folks uh, new ideas on where they can go live. And if we have to help them move, we'll help them move. But we have to make sure that these people want to do this because one of the problems that we have is we sit here and we complain about it. But when we go out to the location, a lot of these folks don't want to move. A lot of these folks will not accept the help. And then when you, when, I don't want anybody forced because then you start opening yourself for criticism. But we are going to do everything we can to offer those people that are homeless, and the mayor, by the way, has is is got a program that's gonna end homeless this year. So there should be no homeless veterans by the end of this year. Thank you, Rachel. Yo. When he says that he's bringing other uh, projects, I wanna know if if he uh, followed the process of inviting people, so everybody would know what's going on in the ward. That's, that's, the, that's one thing. I've never received a letter from you uh, inviting me to a community meeting about this project. Second, talking about homeless people, he is the chairman of the housing committee in city council. He has been, he has been sitting in over $500 million for years 
and he still doesn't call a meeting with the community organiz uh, the community organizations to open up the process. There's a lot, there's thousands and thousands of vouchers for low-income people, and yet he has not called any meetings. He he doesn't move the, the those funds, and the, the, uh, the community organization that advocates for homeless has been criticizing him. As a matter of fact, because there's some money allocated for the homeless, and he has not addressed it. The community has lost hundreds of trees over the last few years. What are you going to do to make sure that those trees are eventually replaced? One minute. Really? I'm not too familiar with that specific um, issue of how that works in terms of trees being taken down or how they are removed. My commitment is to, to continue to allocate the money for those trees because, first of all, you know, trees represent a, a great part of the community. Uh, I have seen a lot of trees that are dead for years and people have been complaining about the removal of those trees because of so many issues and uh, the trees are continuing up there without any 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 action. I want to make sure that if the trees if trees have to be taken down is because they are completely dead and, to, and they have to be replaced. I, I want to make sure that that's within the budget so that those trees are uh, back again to the community. I will have all the folks that have trees removed call my office and we will have a tree planted in front of your house as soon as possible. That's as simple as that. Call us, tell them you want a tree, and we'll put a tree in front of your house. Now, my opponent just made a, 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 a statement that she doesn't know what she's talking about. And this is important and I clarify this. This voucher system that she claims she knows she's talking about, she's totally wrong. Those vouchers are CHA. Chicago Housing Authority, and they are administered by them. Now, we've been trying to uh, work out an ordinance called Keep the Promise between CHA and the advocates, and we cannot call a meeting until those groups start the negotiation. But that's where this money it goes on those vouchers. It is an I who calls the meeting, and even the mayor can until they get to until they reach the agreement on how they're going to agree to spend those dollars. Well, you should open the process. Candidates will have up to five minutes to present a closing statement. We'll start with Millie and then Ray. Five minutes. First of all, I want to thank you again for coming out. Uh, it's 18 more days before election. I am very proud of the job that I've done uh, during this campaign. Forcing a runoff to the incumbent of 24 years is a great achievement. Yeah. I want to be the independent voice of the people of, of this great board where I've been living for 31 years. I want well, to be the person to years. address the issues of the community and to bring the services fairly and quick instead of people waiting for, for weeks and months before something is done. I want to be able to be that person who is compassionate to our families, to our kids, to our youth and bring hope and bring new expectations for our kids to be in school, to be able to graduate and to dream to go to college and become professionals. That's one thing that I really want to do. When I came to the city, I came with many dreams. I'm a mother of two children. I, I did a great job as a mother. They are two professionals. And I want to be able to, to look, my, to look in, the, in the eyes of my people and let them know, yes, you can, you can send your kids to college. You can, you can help your kid be the best professional, no matter what uh, the obstacles or, 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 the, uh, or the lack of funds or, or expectations are. I want to be able to support my kids. I want to be able to be that person who, who addresses the issues, the person who's not going to be a rubber stamp for the mayor of Chicago. I want to be able to make the decisions based on the interest of my residents of the 31st Ward. I've been living here and I have a, a good track record of, of my accomplishments. Nobody can question you know, all the, the things that I've been able to do and I am very proud of it. I want my people to be, to be uh, ready 
to embrace change, not to let themselves be intimidated, to vote for, for, for change, to vote for a new leadership, and not to vote for tradition. Thank you. Well, I'm going to start by correcting some errors. Uh, yeah, you, I'm going to correct what you are. You know, people are saying that I don't do enough in the school. My opponent says she lived in a school in this community for 31 years. Mr. Alonso, at the last debate, refreshed my memory when he made a statement, and I agree with that because he was right, that for 31 years she has lived in this community, and he was a member of the, of the Kelvin Park School Council, and when there are meetings to solve problems, he never saw my opponent there. I've been there, I know that because we, we, we see each other. Irma Cornell is a member. But, you know, to say that you do something and you don't do it, that's correct. If you're going to be a, a member of the community, then go to CAPS meetings. Right. Go to marches. March with us against violence. Right. Come to the schools where there's a problem. Go to a block where there's a problem. I have never seen my opponent there with all respect that she says she had. Never. And if she says she went there when she was working, that might, that might be true, but she was getting paid to go there and cover that story. <laughs> Simple as that. You stated that I, that I took credit for your husband's uh, 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 by literacy See you. Know the name of the yeah, right. Here's a letter. Here's a letter. a letter from Janet Nolan, who works for the Illinois Seal of Biliteracy, stating the facts about this program. And in 2007, I get a resolution for the Biliteracy Seal to make it more acceptable and move to the city of Chicago. I didn't take credit for the Valerio Seal. I didn't pass it. It was passed by two people in Springfield, Senator Iris Martinez and State Representative Cynthia Soto. And I specifically made that clear. And Janet Nolan was there, and she heard the statement. It is right here in her letter. So for you to go out on radio and tell people here that I took credit for something I didn't do, you're sadly mistaken. You should tell the truth. That's the problem. You stretch the truth. You should tell that you should not be telling people things that are not true. I do not accept the credit. All I did was I brought it to the Board of Education so that the Board of Education, so that the Board of Education would accept this and start providing this program to our kids so that when they graduate, they'll have another tool to make it easy to get to what they want to do. Now, I want to work in this community and I want to continue to improve our community, and I want to continue to bring the programs that we've been bringing. And it comes to jobs, no one has brought more than 1,600 jobs from any of my colleagues at one time. I did that, and I, and I, had, I did it on my own. All we did, we offered those people an 8B and a, and a 6B tax. Uh, we didn't give them any tips. Same thing with Walmart. Every time Walmart comes into the city, they get Millions of dollars with the TIF. This Walmart is spending $60 million. $60 million out of their own pocket. Not a penny of TIF. And you know what? That TIF that I saved there is going to be used to create parks, to build playgrounds for the kids, and to build more buildings that we can help seniors and people that are homeless. <coughs> so I'm going to continue to do my job the way I've been doing it. And this war is considered one of the cleanest wars in the city of Chicago. And I can tell you that. And also, if you read the newspapers, I'm the only, I'm one of the few aldermen that returns over $75,000 back to the city council floor because I don't use that money. In my, in my office, we raise money and we pay the office expense. We don't take a penny and I return that money back every year to the general revenue fund. So I pay for the electricity, 
the, the heat, the phones, the paper supplies, everything that goes out in the service office, we pick up the bill. So I just, I'm very proud, I'm very proud of you guys giving me the opportunity to serve you. We're going to continue to do the great things in the 31st Ward. I wish everybody luck, have a nice evening, and God bless you all.